Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be looking at how you can create online virtual tours for your free zone and your city with our all new product called Zoom Tour. My name is Elisa Sklar, and I am the VP of Marketing with GIS Planning. I appreciate all of you taking time out of your busy days to join us here today. With that, I would like to introduce my two colleagues here with me today. I've got Sarah Russis from our uh, FT office in London. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Alisa. Hello, everyone. And I've also got Chris Gillis from our California office in Oakland. Hello, Chris. Hello, everyone. And Chris works on the client services team, so he is part of where the magic happens for the implementation for all of our clients. Um, before I turn this over to Chris to give you a tour of the back end and a deeper dive into the product, I want to tell you just a few things about what it is that we're going to be looking at here. So Zoom Tour is a brand new product. There's really nothing else like this exactly on the market. It is cloud-based software that allows you to build in your own content. And so uh, an investment in Zoom Tour gives you a license where you can build as many tours as you like. Uh, we have all sorts of support documents and, and best practices and suggestions on how to do this. It's very, very easy to do. Generally, our clients are building these as theme tours, so each tour has its own theme. We'll show you some examples so you can see what I mean. The back end of Zoom Tour is very intuitive. It's basically a wizard that walks you through how to drag and drop and add in the data, the coordinates, the the copy, the pictures, the video, anything that you want to put in there, it's very easy to do. And sharing Zoom Tour is very easy as well. You share it with a single link. We'll show you how you grab that link. And within the tour, it's also possible to share it directly to the major social media channels. Now within each tour, just like any physical tour that you might take if you went and visited a new city, you can add as many stops as you want along the tour. So picture those hop on hop off buses, if you will, that you probably are familiar with seeing if you've been a tourist in, in any cities around the world. You can get on and off and you can have a look around while you're there, learn some things, get some information. That's what we've reproduced here with this virtual tour. Within each stop, you can add images, video, audio, you can add links to website, you can add links to data tools, you can add text. Uh, there's all sorts, and of course, we can also add map views. So we use Google Maps as our interface. You can add a three Google Maps 360 view, you can add um, street view that you can give people an a sense of what it's like to actually be there. Within the tour, you also, within each stop, you get to put a description. As you can see in the image here on the screen, there's a text box on the left-hand side of the screen. And there you can format the text as you need it. So there's a very simple editor. You can use uh, text with different colors. You can bold, you can italicize, you can change the font size. You can also add hyperlinks and links to social media channels within that text as well. Now, if you are a GIS planning customer, you can also incorporate data from your GIS planning tools, your Zoom Prospector intelligence uh, component tools, your microsites, uh, if that's something that you're interested in doing. It's not a must, of course, but many of our clients like to be able to build that in as well. And then what do we do with the tour? So as the uh, head of marketing here, that we've devised a whole be best practices document that gives you suggestions on how you might do this. We have clients that have put the tours on their websites. You can add it into your email newsletters. You can post it on social media, use it in email campaigns, build the link into proposal documents or emails. And in an age where travel is restricted and we're all doing these online digital presentations, it's really just a fantastic way to, uh, to um, also do these online presentations as well. I'm just gonna quickly show you an example from one tour. This is a tour that was built by a client of ours in South Carolina. And what they've done is created this regional tour. So you can see this is how all tours open. You've got the numbers of the stops here on the side. They've got some text description. They've also included an audio file that welcomes people to the tour. They've added an image into this section as well. And then along the bottom, we can navigate to the different stops. 
So this takes us to uh, one of the first stops that we've got here. So this is a, a map that we can scroll around by dragging it. You'll see that there's images available. You can add as many as you want. Uh, this would take us to, uh, this is one of the GIS planning data tools and infographic that we offer that we can build in here. You can bring them back to the map or back to the 360 degree view. So each one of these uh, stops offers that ability to build in more information and more content along the way. Um, and it lets us really explore uh, more about the region so that we can show off the things that are interesting to them. Just a couple of examples of different tours that we've seen people build um, since we launched this in December. You can have tours of different industry sectors. And I believe I have a quick example of one here. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here, but this is in California. They built, I'm sorry, this is in Arizona. This is a tour of their food processing industry sector. And so what they've done is highlighted different anchor companies within that tour. Uh, we have another one. Um, this is one that I built as a, our holiday tour. I invited everyone on our team to submit their favorite businesses from within their communities so that we could provide some information about that and give us a tour of all the places that people within our company like to visit. We have another client, uh, sorry, we'll come back to that one actually in a moment up in Canada who is built, they are trying to attract film and video production facilities. And so they've put together a tour of all the places in their community that film producers have used along the way. And you can have links to the websites for these different places. Um, and it gives some information about the productions that have filmed there. You can actually see clips from the trailers for those individual films. Um, and one other one that I think I have up here as well, this is a sample tour. Um, we, we just put this together for Bilbao in Spain. This is not an official tour at all, uh, but just so that you can see uh, very briefly for a tourism perspective, it's possible to build something like this as well. Uh, we can have links to different websites and it also allows us to uh, just showcase things along the way. For free zones, there's all, it's really up to you what you might choose to forefront for information about your region. As we say, we invite you to let your imagination be their guide. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can actually do with this, and there's all sorts of different ways that we can help you market that. And with that, I'm going to pass this over to Chris, who's going to give you a deeper dive into uh, what Zoom Tour looks like and what it looks like from the back end as well. Okay, great. Uh, and you're seeing that Misa tour again here. Yeah, I just want to go over how easy this is. Actually, Chris, we can't see your screen. Oh, there we can. Thank you very okay. much. Sorry about that. Sorry. All right, so there we go. Let me know if there's any other challenges. Um, yeah, so I want to just go over how easy this is to make and uh, you know get up and running with this. So once you're up and running, you know, you become a, a customer of Zoom tour here. Yeah, everything is really self-service. There's it's simply laid out to make things happen. I'd like to show you on this tour the elements that we'll be looking at in the back end. So on the left here, we talked about this description panel here. This is where a lot of your, your text content will go. There's the stops here. For every stop, they will have these five little buttons here. Um, there's four on this one, but there's a potential of five. Pictures, you know, a website embed here. Um, the drone imagery, and then the map location as well. There's also an option for street view. Um, let's jump in and look at how all those work. So when we come into the admin, this is just sort of our test playground here. You'll simply create a new tour. You'll give it a name. And then from there, you'll be able to edit um, the, the introduction and then the stops. Here is a example one where I've added one stop. For the introduction, it's really easy. There's just some text here, a title, the description itself. This can be formatted with text, images, sound. You can even embed a video in here. This is like a little HTML editor. You can bold, make things bigger, a lot of power here. Um, as we look at each individual stop, the stop has a title, has the same description attributes. Since it is a tour-based application, it's on a map because this is really important. You can also change the map level of zoom. So if you're in a tight city, you could zoom in and show something close. If it is sort of a national park or something, you could zoom out and show it in context. So each stop has that variable element there. 
Also, each stop has the ability to put in its social media attributes. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, you can put that all there for each stop. If you don't put it in, it just doesn't show. Simple as that. Once you've created that general uh, tab there, you can go in and add individual elements here. So what we saw on the front end of the tour, the street view, um, you know, those drone videos, that can be a custom tour there. It just points to the file from the drone video. Galleries, photos, videos, and the data one is simply a website that you can put in. Here I put in some sample data from a Zoom prospector, but if this is a website that has ticketing or other information about that location, you can put in that direct URL to that page on that website. Very, very easy. When you come in, um, to the first one here, it's just really you entering in this information. It is like buying something online. You're putting in details, address, choosing the map location where you want the stop delivered essentially, and you're good to go. It's that simple. So that was, is what will get you back here to this and be able to put in some of these. So here's the data tab with that website URL. Here's the one with just a photo, but if there were a video, it would show up down here as well and then uh, obviously the map location. Jump through really quickly to one with street view. One second here, so here's a street view one. So if it is available, and street view varies from location to location, but here's an example where I wanna highlight this building. Very easy, you can always rotate the street view and get a look at what you want there. So a lot of power in this. Along with just making it easy on the back end here from coming in to creating and then editing, and then editing an individual tour, we have a full help section here. So when you come in, there is a help center. We have um, a whole section dedicated to Zoom tour right up at the top. We have a quick guide to get you started. So if you don't like to read a lot and don't want to spend a lot of time learning how to get set up really quickly, this is the page for you. If you read this, you'll become an expert in this in no time. We also have, perhaps even more importantly, a tips, trek, tricks, and best practices page. So once you've built your first tour, how do you look at it and say, is this good enough to go live? What happens when I go live? This is where you'll get that information here. And that help center also is uh, something that's gonna grow and expand. If you do need additional help, we have a dedicated email address that you can email and that will get your question answered, uh, you know, usually in one business day there. That's, I'm the one who does that here on the west coast of North America. So, you know, that time zone. But other than that, you know, you've got full resources to get started and uh, make great tours there, all from your browser. Elisa, that is my bit on this. I don't know uh, if you have any questions about what I said or if I need to fill in anything else. That's great, thank you so much, Chris. And just a reminder, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the questions field in the GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, Chris, are people able to link to any website that they want? And what what are the two different ways that we could do that within a Zoom tour? Great question. So um, you can, let me get to one with a website here. So this little pizza pie chart here, this here um, has a URL for the data from a Zoom prospector here. If a website allows embed, it can be displayed in here. A lot of e-commerce sites don't, but most websites do. It just depends on the policy of the website. So if you put it in here and you look at the live tour and it doesn't display, that means it's not allowed to be displayed in the embed but you can always put it in the description here and you can change the text size and make it bigger if you need be. Um, so most all websites display, some e-commerce ones have a little challenge there. Excellent, and then people could also build hyperlinks into the text on the left-hand side of the screen if they wanted yeah, to do absolutely. that. Yes, and I don't think Nisa's East has got a couple here and uh, at the start they have a couple there as well. And these are really great for calls to action. So I'm on this stop and I'm learning about this, you know, this they're talking about the freeway access here. But what, you know, do you want the person viewing this tour to do? Or having a call to action in this description is a really good idea. Cause you know, like, hey, do you like freeway access in, you know, South Carolina? Click here to learn more or get in contact with us. Don't let them just sit there on the tour, but give them something, uh, uh, a reason to reach out to you. 
Exactly. Now, that's one of the primary takeaways that I really like our clients to have here is, and you can see this in the best practices document, is that for any tour that you're designing, you have to know what your primary objective is. So generally, there's some kind of action you would like people to take after absorbing the information that you put in there. And most often, that action will be uh, to either contact your organization uh, through telephone, email, go to your website generally. Those links are very important. So we want to make sure that those calls to action are very are placed prominently throughout. I usually recommend them as uh, footers on specific places uh, in the text boxes on the left-hand side of the screen. Certainly you want to have it in the intro slide on a tour and you definitely want to have it on the outro slide as well. Uh, Chris, if you want to put our holiday tour up there. I Yes, so this is the one here, and I'm on the first stop uh, here. Okay, so if you go over to stop number four. Great, let's do that. And I'm not just saying this because it was the stop, you know, that I had prepared. But if you uh -huh. scroll down in the text box on the left, you'll see that there is a link to the website for this business, which is a ski hill. But the other mm -hmm. thing that I've built in at the bottom, which is very easy to do from the back end, is a link over to the Facebook page or the social, I think we can do Twitter, we can do uh, LinkedIn as well. That is the uh, organizational page for that particular business. So that's another nice way if you want to drive more traffic to specific companies, organizations, or businesses within your area, that you can put that information down there as well. And if you go to the final stop on this tour, on our holiday tour, you'll see sure. that we've got uh, exactly. So this is our call to action as well. I would thank you for joining us. You can le learn more there. You'll see that there's a link prominently placed in the text section as well. Um, and there's uh, there's a couple links, in fact, and our social channels. So I think that's really important. And these are kinds of things that we share uh, for any clients who are using Zoom tour just practical tips and tricks that make this as effective as possible for whatever objective you have designated for the purposes of that tour. Um, then we have a, another question here. Uh, where does this tour live or where can this tour live? Can I embed this on my website or can it only be accessed via the link? And I, we could, yeah, there you go, the NISA page is a good example. Yeah, so Ngozi, you asked this question. These are great questions, probably the most important one. How do you, once you create a tour, how do you share that? So a tour is shared by its URL up here. Um, there's a dedicated URL for the tour there. You can build groups of tours as well. Um, but to get it out in the world, um, you know, you're promoting that URL. So NISA has this in their navigation on their website. No one, you know, you don't know if this is a page or whatever. So you click on this, you're going to get jumped into their tour right away. It is a genius way to have it there. You've gone to that work to build the tour, put it on your website. Um, you, we have links built in for stops so you can share them on social media as well. Um, this is part of your marketing going forward using Zoom Tour. We want you to share this tour in outreach on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, newsletters. Elisa, where else can we share this? Um, uh, you know, you can use these as presentations for online conferences or meetings. They make them so much more interesting than just using PowerPoint. Um, you can also um, use this in put it in proposals. You can put links in emails, as you said, in newsletters, certainly in social media. People put them in microsites as well. Um, we've got an example, and Chris, I sent it to you in the chat over there, that um, the city of Abbotsford in British Columbia has a page dedicated to filming in their town. So they put the link in there so that you can actually have the tour directly from that page. So certainly in the navigation on your website is possible, but you can a bit, you know, include that link anywhere within your website as well. Um, and, and just think as creatively as possible. So, for example, if you've got a trade mission or uh, you're going to a trade show and those things uh, uh, come back post-pandemic, it's possible to create a tour specifically for the purposes of that because you can create as many tours as you want. And then you can use that link in as many creative ways as you want. Uh, so, so basically, the, the idea is that the sky is really the limit here. Uh, on how you use that, but the the link itself is the main way that you share it, and then you can choose how you want to do that. Right, yeah, and both these are excellent examples of how to do that. Exactly. Uh, Sarah, is there anything that you wanted to add, any questions that you've had from clients since we've uh, debuted this? And really, this is a brand new tool that we launched in December. 
But if there's anything else that you wanted to add, you're welcome to do that. Thank you so much, Alisa. I mean, really, as you said, I mean, this is the sky is the limit with this tool. I mean, you can uh, really emphasize and enhance what you want to put, uh, what you want to highlight in your location, whether it is a free zone or your city in general. And um, of course, I mean, my team and I were in charge of the international side of things. So please don't hesitate to get in touch with us so that we can uh, arrange an additional demo uh, and go through the details of how we can launch that for you. But as you saw from uh, Alisa's and Chris's uh, demo, it's very easy, um, just a few clicks away, really. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, and, Sarah. And if anyone else has any questions, you can pop them in that question box real quick before we wrap up here. Happy to answer those for you all. Um, one other thing that I just wanted to add, although we know that uh, really the, although the lingua franca of investment attraction is, is really English, it is possible to put any uh, language into the editor on the left. So if you wanted to have um, any additional language in there as well, you could certainly type that in and include that. So it's possible to have a, a tour in a different language or in a, you know, have multilingual uh, text copy in there as well. The navigation is English at the moment. So um, really quite useful. We uh, encourage people to be as creative as possible with this. I know these days uh, protecting and supporting our businesses is a huge issue with many of our clients because of pandemic restrictions. So we're seeing you know, a walk down Main Street or promoting businesses in different sectors as a creative way to use the, the tool as well. Um, and because they're so easy to create and you can create as many as you like, that's really entirely uh, up to you to do that. Now, I don't see any other questions coming up here. What I'm going to do, uh, Chris, is just put our contact information back up here on the uh, on the screen. I'm just going to grab that over here. Yeah, um, go ahead. And if anyone has any questions uh, that you want to um, – oh, I think I've got a little uh, – additional information maybe my my uh, voice recording was working here let's see we have a couple more questions actually that have come in can videos be uploaded chris do you want to just explain how we do that uh yes absolutely so videos photos uh, are easy to upload there there's just you know the video needs to be hosted on say youtube or vimeo and you can upload it the photo is just something from your desktop so completely possible there yeah. Okay, and then um, another question here, to have access to this tool, is it an annual licensing fee or is there a pay-as-you-go model available? Uh, Sarah, do you want to jump in with that? Yes, uh, this is an, actually an annual fee, um, so it's like a license and you pay on, a, on an annual basis. Yeah. So please, again, any question, please let us know. Yeah, and with that license, you can create as many tours as you like. You'll have your brand and your logo in it, but there is not a limit on uh, tours there. So if you want to create two or you want to create 20, you can do that. Wonderful. With that, I don't see any additional questions that have come up. You have our contact information here on the screen. We're happy to uh, give you a customized demo and to the questions that you have. So feel free to reach out to Sarah. Uh, Chris and I are uh, the ones who are creating the support content and the ones at the support end of all this. Um, so uh, we will be in touch and we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy days to join us. Chris, thank you very much. Sarah, thank you for being here as well. And we look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Day. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye now. Bye.